this ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware I think it's time we stop children What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down What's going down? Oh, I like that start. That's way better. <laughs> well, hey, thank, uh, welcome to Occupy TV. I'm David Sierra Lupe with Alice DiMaselli uh, from Southern Oregon. We're getting all bioregional here. Uh, another one of the wonderful people we stole from the LCC Peace Conference today, and we're here to talk about uh, uh, everything, the whole of everything. And uh, let's <laughs> let's let's. <laughs> Let's, let's talk about why you're here. You know, you came up here to sing songs. You came up here to, to, to help us uh, get a grip on, on what we're dealing with these days. Well, you know, being invited to come and sing at the Peace Symposium, it was a huge, it's a huge honor. Uh -huh. And I always kind of feel like my job is sort of to be a, a Mother Earth representative uh -huh. everywhere I go. Okay. You know, it's to always remind that, you know, with all this heady stuff we get into and with all of that, we need to remember where we come from and that you know we we live on common ground and the common ground is mother earth so that's sort of uh you know what i always bring with me wherever i go and that's sort of you know coming here that's that was the the charge that i that i took and i, I hope that it was successful uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> my time at the conference a great conference filled with filled with lots of uh, great ideas and, yeah, and, and wonderful and, people and, and wonderful people uh, and we got one of them <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's true we, uh, we are at a time right now where we're fractured where we're we're factionalized uh, and uh, so that's a message that's a potent message to to have right now yeah well I mean we you know it's important I you know I, I love the whole occupy thing and the 99 percent but then I'm always saying you know we've also got to remember that we are the whole uh -huh. We are the whole, and and that's you know that's an important thing to me mm -hmm. to remember that. Uh -huh. And uh, and I'm a really inspired by what's going on in the world. Yeah. I mean, it's there's things that are really depressing and intense, but the fact that people are getting up and getting out in a way that they never did. You know, I, I don't I in my lifetime I haven't experienced on such a regular basis. I mean, yeah, there'd be protests. I go to New York City and big things that I'd gone to and Redwood Summer and stuff, but this is sustained, lots of people sustained for a long period of time. It's all over the world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, standing yeah. up and saying, no, this is not how we want to live. This is not okay. Yeah. Those corporations are not people. I'm a person though. Right. And I feel that my voice should be heard. And that's just like, yay, this is what I've been yeah. praying for forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it seems like we've got the, the, the convergence, you know, the, the uh, oppressive power, you know, that's, that's clamping down on us. But at the same time, there's, there's the, you know, I mean, it, it, once the oppressive power gets too strong, there is going to be that pushback. But at the same time, it seems like we have other, other things that are coming together to help us, to mm -hmm. help us uh, push, push uh, uh, wisdom, I guess. I mean, th that seems to be what you're saying, is that there's a greater wisdom that, that we've lost touch at. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I do believe that yeah. very much so. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because we, we come, the world in general there is, has been ruled uh, in a patriarchal way. And I feel like the voices of the mamas, the voices of the women, the voice of the earth is coming forward. And uh, some of the people that I respect the most and that I gain the most uh, strength from are the strong women. And, and in particular, the 13 indigenous grandmothers uh -huh. who um, are traveling around. They travel around the world and they, they do ceremonies in their different parts of the world, bring each other together. And uh, Grandmother Agnes, Agnes Baker Pilgrim is from my neck of the woods. Um, the Tequilma, the eldest living Tequilma native person. And, um, you know, she talks about the water. And, I mean, I'm so much all about the water. And so when she talks about, you know, you have to thank the water and, and th you know, thank, be, be grateful for every drop, things like that. I mean, that's just, that's revolutionary. It's uh -huh. simple and it makes sense, but it's also revolutionary. And I feel like it's, it's a bringing of the feminine towards the fore which we've needed for a really oh, long yeah. time. And I'm not saying the feminine being necessarily 
women, men, because I feel like we all have a, a, a continuum within us mm -hmm. of femininity to masculinity, and we've sort of leaned really heavily on that masculine side, and it's really time to come to balance. And so for me, you know, that's where the music comes in, because the music comes from this other force mm -hmm. that's not the dominant culture. Right, right. That's not this, this, you know, all about aggression and there's a vulnerability in it, which we all need to, lo to learn to have because that's, that's going to be our healing. That's going to be what, in my opinion, fixes things. Mm -hmm. We're not going to beat things into submission and fix them. That's our problem. That's how we got to where we are. We've got to learn to become vulnerable, and it's not easy. Right. It sounds to me like you're saying give, give up on fear. Uh, that's been really the dominant, the dominant message, especially in the last 10 years, has been we have so much to fear. Yeah, you know? and, and we and, fear people that they look different than us or they have a different religion than us, and, they have, and it's like, no, yeah. that's not going to help us. That's not going to protect us. You know, hating people because they're different isn't going to protect anybody. It's just going to create more hate. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible cycle that's been going for many, many, many years, many generations, and we have the opportunity. And I, that's what I see, this seed in the whole Occupy thing. I see this seed of a different voice coming uh -huh. forward. Yeah. And, and hopefully a more a voice coming from a more place of balance. Right. Not always just like, yeah, we're going to beat it into submission and we're going to, you know, yeah. fight, fight, fight. I, I went to a rally recently um, in Medford where I live and uh, it was a rally, a domestic violence uh, vigil uh -huh. because there, we've had three women uh, murdered in domestic violence uh, situations in the last three or four months. That's terrible. And the mother of one of the victims got up and she spoke and I just cried my eyes out. She said, when are we going to stop the war? We've got a war on terror. Why do we have to have a war on terror? Mm -hmm. We've got a war on drugs. Why do we have to war against drugs? We have a war on the homeless. We have a war on this. We've got a war. And then she just went on and on. And she said, war is, ki war is what killed my daughter. The mentality of war is what killed my daughter. This is time to change. Uh -huh. We need to love. We need to learn how to, you know, to stop warring. What would you say would be the opposite? I, you know, I'm, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I mean, you know, stop the war on terror. I was trying to think, what, what are we going to replace it with? An embrace of terror, or an embrace on terror, or the, uh, well, you know, the how do we... you're not going to embrace terror. You're no, going to embrace peace. Yeah. Right. We're not going to, instead of warring against something, working towards something. Uh -huh. You know, instead of warring against corporations, let's just put them out of business. Uh huh. Well, now that's still that's still a us versus them thing because corporations are a tool. I I I am one of the first people to say that corporations <laughs> are a tool that has started to work us instead yeah, of us working it. Yeah, we're not working them. Yeah. 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 But you know, uh, how how do we embrace them and bring them into the fold? How, not them. How do we embrace that structure, that system, and bring it into the fold? It seems to me, that's what you're saying is is we. It's not. It's not a, a, a us versus them. It's not an aversive thing. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, it's it starts with just you know. Being people. Mm -hmm. You know, realizing that we need to be humil. We need to have humility. Uh -huh. None of us. You know, I don't care if you're the president. I don't care if you're the president of the corporation. I don't care if you're, you know, the most famous musician or whatever. You're just exactly like everybody else. Right. And everybody on this planet deserves to have a place to live. Mm -hmm. Everybody on this planet deserves to have food. Mm -hmm. Everybody on this planet deserves to be safe in their home. Uh -huh. You know, and we can get into that because I know that, you know, there's the whole story of uh, Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. who was not safe in his own home. Due uh, to the police coming in and basically murdering him White in his Plains. own home, White Plains, New York, yeah. um, and that's something that you know that's a story that I you know I have to talk about everywhere I go because oh, yes. that's real, you know, and that's racism, real, continued. Everybody deserves and it's to be happy. institutionalized. Yeah, and everybody. But if we come from this place where we remember who we are, and we're able to find that place of humility, 
that's when things change. And yes, it may not change overnight. We're not changing overnight. But each of us as individuals has the, the ability and the power to change one thing, and that's our minds mm -hmm. and how we see things and how we think about things. And if we don't, we're doomed. Right. But if we do, then we might be able to take that to the next person. And they'll see, oh, that's a different perspective. That's a different way of living. You know, it's not how much can I get. It's how much do I need? Mm -hmm. How much can I give? It's, it seems to me like uh, one of the things uh, uh, a friend of mine asked me, you know, what is it, what is it you would consider the, the, the bottom, the bottom rung? What, what, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, joining Occupy, you're, you're saying things are, are a problem, you know, what's your fix? And it seems to me you, you, were, you were stating it already. Uh, everybody, 100% guarantee, everybody needs to be fed all the time. Mm -hmm. we, there, you know, it should be no There's question. There's no shortage of food yeah, on the no, planet. Yeah, yeah. And, and like Max Rameau has been saying, you know, it's, it's not, it's not uh, uh, should we give everybody a $50,000 uh, boost on their equity or 50% you know, cut in, the, in their, their home value or whatever, should we make housing a human right? Of housing is should. a hu uh, place to live should be a human right. I, I, I believe it is actually under the UN uh, uh, doctrines, you know, of human rights. I think it, that housing is listed in there, shelter or something. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so I, I figure those two are basic. Healthcare, come on. That was healthcare. the one I was going towards next. Healthcare. healthcare. The three, and I can't think of anything more basic than that. Those three. I mean, I had a back injury this last year, and I think you know it wasn't. It was bad, but it wasn't that bad. Uh -huh. And I have no insurance, so I'm like trying to figure out how I'm going to go into debt, pay this thing, oh, you know, yeah. whatever. But then I think, oh, my God, you know, what if, what if it was something like cancer or whatever? I just wouldn't be able to go. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't be able to get treatment. Until you know, it... uh, luckily, I have lots of friends that are, you know, doctor. They would doctor me in a spiritual way <laughs> yeah. because that's really all I have access to. Uh-huh, yeah. You know, and so... You know, those things are important, right. but, but we're too busy arguing about, you know, whether you're a Republican, Democrat, whatever. It's like, I don't even know who any of those people are anymore. I mean, I know they're me and they're us and they're our family, but I feel like in a way our job is to, to bring it back down and be constant reminders. How much do you need? Uh -huh. And more importantly, what will you give? How mm -hmm. much can you give? Because it's all about how much can I get? How much can I get? What can I get for this? What can, and it doesn't need to be that way. We can take care of each other. To, to make the cycle work, you know, you, you, you're offering food, housing, and health care, and that's a wonderful thing. But if the system's really going to work, it has to cycle back around again. Yeah. And, and once you have that safety and that security, so you know you're not going to die, you know, you know you're not going to die of starvation, exposure to the elements, and, you, and, and you're going to be able to have a good shot at staying healthy. Once you achieve that, then you can start to give back. Right, and yeah. a lot of people are so stuck in the desperation of, oh my God, I can't pay my bills. Right. Or I'm on the street and I need health care, you know, and a lot, I mean, and health care needs to cover everything, including mental health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it needs to include, you know, all of our, you know, all of our different myriad conditions that we all have access to getting you know? oh yeah, yeah. And, and 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 they and all those conditions are worse right now because uh, we're all under so much stress we're under so much stress yeah. and we've got people coming back from a war mm. that they that they don't they can't make sense of that uh -huh. none of us can really make sense of and you're stuck in these conditions that are horrible and I mean you you know you come back to this country and then you know, you're, you're supposed to find a job, there's no jobs, you know, and you've got post-traumatic stress disorder, or, you know, there's, you know, women in the military that are, you know, raped in the military, and they're just discharged saying they have a personality disorder. Right. Because yeah. the military doesn't want to take responsibility that somebody in the high mucky muck or somebody in the military sexually assaulted this woman, many thousands of women, so they just say, oh, well, you have a personality disorder. Right. Because if... If you were a normal girl, you wouldn't complain about this. Uh -huh. I mean, that yeah. stuff just irks the living, you know, mm -hmm. crap out of me. I'm just, oh, yeah. you know, so. The, but those are things that we need, you know, we need to address. But ultimately, that all, even that, even that, you talk about that stuff, but it always comes back to that we're too much here. We need to be more here, mm -hmm. and we need to respect the planet because if uh -huh. we respect the Earth 
as she is meant to be respected, that we live on this beautiful living planet who provides everything for us. It's not like the government is going to provide health care, shelter, food, and everything. The earth provides it. Uh -huh. People are actually, in our societies, we've actually, we actually prevent people from having access because you can't live a simple way anymore. No. You know, you talk to, go to, go to your local reservation. Talk, you know, go, go down, talk to anybody who's, you know, who has tried to live a traditional lifestyle. You know, in the Northwest, a traditional lifestyle means salmon. Mm -hmm. We're destroying the salmon populations. Oh, yes. So if you have no salmon population, you destroy the culture. And so they cannot live, you can't live. You know, but the buffalo, our traditional culture, all throughout this country, they're not gone. free anymore. Yeah. They're gone. So how do you live a traditional way? How do you... So that, that's not just... Can we change traditions? You know, I mean, obviously traditions change and stuff, yeah. but, but what I'm saying is we, our culture is actively preventing people from living mm -hmm. and having what they need that is provided by the earth. Right. Whereas... So it's not like we're saying, oh, the government should give us. Because people, you know, you, you have a conversation like this with some folks, and they'll be like, well, you just want handouts from the government. Right, yeah. No. Mother yeah. Earth gives us everything we want. Why should you have more than somebody else? I'm not saying, you know, you know go to the food line and, and, you know, everybody should, you know, only get these rations of this or that. I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. What a horrible, horrible world to live in. But the, yeah. the, world, the world that we were... The world that we, the real world that we live in, the earth provides for us. It's a world of abundance. And it's a world of abundance. And what, yeah. what's happening is that some people take the resources and think they own them. Mm -hmm. And that's part of where our problem lies because we, we think we own the earth. We think we own this. We think we own that. We didn't listen to Chief Seattle. But in reality, we don't. Yeah. And, you know, those same people, I mean, Chief Seattle, yeah, but those, mo a lot of the people in our country, the majority of people are Christian. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself lived a very, he chose to live in poverty. He chose to give, uh -huh. you know, so he chose to live as simply as he could. But in our culture, we choose to live as lavish of life as we can. And so my question is always, how much do you need? Right. And yeah. how much can you give? Right. And that's what I ask myself every day. Like, how much do you need? And how much are you willing to give? And mm -hmm. I hope and pray that I'm willing to give more and, and than I need to take. And you're also uh, guiding people towards that message with, with your music. I mean, you know, that, that's uh, uh, part, of, part of the, you know, the, you can say that you know, and speak it with right. great eloquence, but the music uh, delivers the message way well, better. Well, music for me is that kind of magic place. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, I'll learn something and then I'll be possessed. Uh -huh. You know, like we were talking about uh, fracking earlier. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was watching a documentary about fracking. And I then became completely possessed uh -huh. about the subject. And the next thing I knew, a song came flying out of me about fracking. fracking. And it, but it's really about a woman who is an organic farmer living on the land who is forced to leave her, li her way of life, uh -huh. who has been forced to leave her chosen way of life where Mother Earth provided for her and her family because somebody else wanted more. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's really the story, and that's sort of the story that's going on all over the planet. And if uh -huh. we could only maybe kind of wrap our heads around that, maybe we would, you know, be all right. Uh -huh. But it's too simple for people. Right. They want some complicated fix. Complicate, everything becomes so complicated. But really, it's simplify. Uh -huh. you know, the Quakers had it. And it's time, a gift to be simple. It's yeah. a gift to be free. Every time somebody has more, somebody else has less. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to share that song with us? Sure, I would love yeah. to. I would love to. I'm going to take a really quick sip of water here, though, because singing uh. is a liquid experience. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> be one. So this song is called, I Want My Old Life Back. Okay. I 
I had a farm in Pennsylvania My means were meager but my life was good Till the energy boom came to my town Now ain't nobody living in my old neighborhood There ain't nobody living in my old neighborhood You see it all comes down to water And no one can argue with that My well's been poisoned My pond is dead, ain't no amount of money gonna ever bring it back. No amount of money can ever bring it back. So frack you and your natural gas. Ain't nothing natural about that. Frack you and your chemical well. I want my old life back We farmers hold the land as sacred We're stewards of a divine trust But these corporations They only worship profit. They go boom, boom, boom until it busts. They go boom, 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 boom until it busts. But what if the people would stand up and say, make it clean now where we ain't gonna pay? Cause I do believe with all of our technology, there's gotta be Way, gotta be a way, gotta be a way. There's gotta be a way, gotta be a way, gotta be a way. Now I moved east on into Philly, and my new neighbors are nice enough. Got myself a job working in a deli, but how I miss the land, and this is more than a little rough. Oh yeah, I miss the land and this is more than a little tough So frack you and your natural gas Ain't nothing natural about that Frack you and your chemical wells I want my old life back I want my old life back I want my old life back Wow The most recent possession <laughs> Uh-huh Wow well, yeah, It's a good possession That's a good possession I, I want you to do me a favor though for Joe There you go. Oh, Just, sorry. Yeah. yeah, this stuff gets yeah. caught in everything. Excuse uh -huh. me. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, wow, wow. There's a lot in that song. A lot about community and a lot about uh, uh, how, how you know, we suffer under the, uh, the boot of, of the need to keep uh, piling up more and more and uh, bigger but tighter stacks. Well, you know, it's funny because when... I was a little kid, and Jimmy Carter was saying, conserve, 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 and people I were angry that. about it. I, never, I didn't understand. I thought it made so much sense to me. Uh -huh. You know, I was just like, wow, I think the guy's really smart. We, don't, we should use less. Mm -hmm. And it's how many years later, and we're still not getting the point? We're, we're not even back to where we were back then. Yeah. I it's like, crazy. Yeah. Like that one cartoon where they have that, that panel of scientists and one guy raises his hand and he says, but what if we, what if we do, uh, you know, stop uh, raping the earth and pillaging the land and all that? And, and it turns out we didn't need to, you know? <laughs> yeah. It turns out we didn't need to. Gosh, that would be terrible, wouldn't that's it? That's good. Yeah, that's yeah. really, I mean, yeah. that's sad, actually. It is, it is. I mean, yeah. you know, it ultimately comes down to, you know, what I like about 
the fact that people are rising up all over the world is that people are taking personal responsibility. And that is, you know, the message of so many, so many elders, so many people over the years that just say, you know, it's all about, life is about being responsible for yourself and being responsible to your community and to your people. And, and realizing, like for me, realizing that the whole planet is our community. Mm -hmm. Every person is my people. I don't only ex you know, think that my people, the people that are connected to me with their blood, are my people. Mm -hmm. You're my people. We mm -hmm. don't share probably you know, any of the same genetic material or whatever, right. but we share DNA because we're all humans. We're all on this planet and we're family. Uh -huh. You know, it's like when I meet somebody, I look them in the eyes, I know that you're my family, you know, and, right. and it's a beautiful thing. I agree. You yes. know, it's a beautiful thing. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Um, I, I, I want to I wanna focus more on community, on the sense of community, you know, and, and I don't know, that's always, that's, that seems to be the, the vibe that I get off of you is, is that, that um, you know, you, well, you just said it, you know, that, that you're all about community. And you were talking about the 13 mothers earlier. Was 13 that, indigenous grandmothers, 13 yeah. indigenous grandmothers. Mm -hmm. I wanted to follow up on that at the time. Uh, I've heard of them, um, but I don't really know the story behind that. Oh, well, Grandma Aggie is, like I said, the, the eldest to Kilma native that uh -huh. lives in southern Oregon. And she uh, got together with these other 12 grandmothers from around the world. Um, and, and they do ceremony, uh -huh. and they pray for the earth, and they go around, and they get audience. They had an audience with the Dalai Lama. They've, they've been working on trying to get an audience with the Pope so that the Pope will rescind the, uh, I guess it wasn't a mandate, but basically, you know, the Catholic Church uh, said it was okay to go and kill Native peoples all over the world Oh. because they were heathens yeah, right. and that they should be converted. Uh -huh. And so the grandmothers want an apology for that. Okay. I would personally like an apology for that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now that's a tough, that's a that tough thing tough. to get because there's so much pride involved in that. And you may, they may not get it, uh -huh. but the fact that they're out there talking to people and they're, they're basically reminding us that indigenous wisdom is still here it's not gone and it doesn't matter what tribe you're from whether it be um you know irish or native american or tibetan or whatever you know or african or anywhere all over the planet there is traditional and indigenous wisdom for that we can tap into mm -hmm. and that pretty much all traditional and indigenous wisdom tells us we need to protect the water mm -hmm. because water is life. Oh, we yeah. need to protect this earth because this earth gives us everything that we have and that we need to live in balance. And so these are sort of like those principles that you know, we have to, to, to embrace. And I mean, I personally feel like if we had a council of grandmothers as our president, we'd be in a much better position. Wow. Or if we had a council of grandmothers leading the world, we'd be in a much better place. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, and so I'm just going to keep that vision. Yeah. You yeah. know, but I mean, community is, is such an interesting thing because there's, there's so many communities that are connected and that can connect. But sometimes we, we feel so different and other from each other. Yeah. You or, know, so my thing is I like to take communities and connect them, mm -hmm. you know, link them up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, from uh, the extended community now, from Eugene to, uh, to Medford, uh, you, I'm sure you have a lot of people in that, that community now, you know, a lot of people you know between here and there. I have family here, everywhere I go. Yes. It's pretty incredible. I mean, yeah. I've just, you know, I, I feel very blessed. You know, being a musician is not something that, uh, the, I mean, I, it can give you great fame and great money, but not kind of the way I do it. Uh -huh. I'm, you know, independent and I'm going to speak my mind. I'm talking about these things that are not really that popular in the mainstream culture. But what it does offer is a place where I can really share what it is that I, I, I feel and I believe and what is the messages that I get. And I can, I can op be open and receive those, you know, th a connection from other people. And so, you know, I feel like I, I have family everywhere I go now. And, and I'm mm -hmm. really, I'm really lucky. Right, right. You know. 
You could uh, you could be uh, selling out uh, stadiums, and you could have uh, you know a rich, lavish lifestyle. But would you be more wealthy? Than yeah, but you I would have now? to totally sell. I mean, I wouldn't be able yeah. to sing the songs that I want to sing. I wouldn't. Yeah. I would have to, you know. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. I could put on a real good country voice. Uh huh. But do I want to do that? No. No. Do I no. want to sell my soul? No. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I it's mean, and other people that that are I'm not, and I in no means no way mean to say that someone who's you know a famous country artist is selling their soul they're not they're following their heart right. my heart brings me Where's on this hear? path my heart gives me songs like that last one right yeah and it puts it brings you puts you on the path that you're following which you know you chose yeah. the path it's not you know I, I i i'm not hearing you saying boy i wish i'd made a different choice no no yeah. absolutely not yeah. and i i do know that you know like my path brings me to rivers. Uh -huh. My path brings me to water, and I love that. And I've not only do I write about rivers and water, but I experience them. I'm, I love whitewater kayaking. I love rafting. I was a raft guide for seven years on the Lower Rogue River, where, you know, I, I had been on the road for 15 years, and um, and I, you know, in that time did a lot of activism. Was very involved in the forest defense issues. Uh -huh. in Southern Oregon and Northern California and was around for Redwood Summer and all that. And when my friends Judy and Daryl, Judy Barry and Daryl Turney were bombed, you know, pretty much for two years, raised money at every show for Judy and her children so they could live, mm -hmm. you know, just uh -huh. to, to help them survive. And right. so I've been involved in, in this kind of stuff for a long time. And I, I did 15 years of this, you know, intense traveling and everything. And and I got to this point where I just needed to do something else. And so I became a guide. And I started taking people in the wilderness. And I realized it's so similar to the music thing. Because it's, and that, that sort of gave me, so now that I'm back, mm -hmm. into back being on the road and I'm not so much on the river, I mean, I'm on the river as much as I can, but I'm not taking people down. I'm still trying to take people to the wilderness. I still try to bring people out into the wilderness through the music. And I still feel like my job is always to say, it's like your mom when you were a little kid, you know, like uh -huh. I'm kind of stepping into my mother role. Go outside and play. Right. It, you know what's good for go you. Go outside and play because yeah. that's what we need. Uh -huh. Is to go outside and play and remember, you know, who we are. Because that's, I mean, we remember who we are when we're out in it. Right. Yeah, and we, you know, we don't spend enough time out. Yeah, in living it. in a box yeah. mm -hmm. inside a house, sitting on a screen and sitting on a box is not what real life is. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. and I'm sorry if I'm upsetting anyone oh, by saying yeah. that, but real life means it doesn't matter if you have two good legs to walk on or if you're in a chair or if you have to use crutches. Get outside mm -hmm. because the sun needs to shine on you. You need the vitamin D. You need that. The the you need the rain. Walking in the rain is like the most beautiful thing. And, and in our culture, we have this whole. I mean, we're we're getting sicker and sicker, and we have more diabetes, and we're we're getting bigger and bigger. And part of that's because we don't move anymore, mm -hmm. and we gotta move. Yes. And part of the idea of you know going out and being part of something like Occupy, it's making you get out of your house, you're outside. I don't, you know, being outside in the city is not bad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the same as the wilderness, but it's still being outside. It is. It's still experiencing life as it really is, because life in a box isn't real. No, yeah, yeah. You know. I was, uh, I was struck when you were talking about the, uh, the 13 indigenous grandmothers and their ultimatum to the Pope. And, uh, it wasn't, uh, it's not really an ultimate, well, it's more of a, a request. request. Yeah. Okay, I like, I, I like the request because uh, that plays into what I was heading is, is uh, there's so much pride in, in the stand that they're asking to change. You know? mm -hmm. they're, they're, and that seems to be you know, uh, really what's, what's pushing us down this other path, the path that you're choosing to, to walk away from is, you know, we're we're proud of the fact that we can build these houses and and shield ourselves from the elements, and we're proud of the fact that we can uh, build these big piles of stuff that uh, that uh, you know we've placed uh, value <laughs> we're on. Culture of hoarders. <laughs> yes, we are. And, and I could be guilty myself. Yeah, you know? yeah, but who's the worst hoarders in this culture? When you think about it, you know, I mean, sure, the the people with the stacks of stuff in their house, but the the I mean, if if it's a if it's a psychological condition. People you know, that hoard money. 
The people that hoard money. Yeah. Yeah. I That's mean, kind of a no-brainer. Uh-huh. Yeah. So they are, they are the most in need of that. Uh, I mean, can you imagine knowing that there's people out there that have nothing that they cannot pay for their children to have clothes and food and shelter and that they cannot pay for them to have health care, but you don't want to pay any more taxes? Right. Because... You're just so stubborn. I mean, I don't get that. I really don't. I mean, I'll pay more taxes. Uh -huh. I don't care. I'll ah. if, but I don't want to be paying it so we can send people off to war and kill other people, you know. But it, it you know. Well, I remember back in the mid '90s, I guess, uh, the head of one of the healthcare companies made a hundred and twenty some odd million dollars in one year. And this was this was somebody in sitting year. in one year. This is somebody sitting on top of the healthcare system. Yeah. So that that means uh, how many people had to pay? You know, uh, if people were back at the time were paying say three thousand dollars a year for health insurance, how many people did it take paying their three thousand dollars a year just to feed that guy's hundred and twenty million? Yeah, and he's uh, just sitting on it. You know, he's just sitting on it. And then and they don't have to pay that many taxes on it. Because oh, yeah. Yeah. they're not paying the same amount as everybody else pays. Right, right. Yeah, all those people who are, who are paying his, his uh, salary uh, were paying more taxes than him, yeah, probably. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But it, and, and then at the same time, he didn't see that. I mean, because he was hoarding it. He was, he was, right. he'd, he'd figured out how to, how to funnel it in there and, and make his piles bigger. Right, well, that's, you know, and then, you know, we deal with that in the environmental movement a lot. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, I went to the shareholders meeting um, in uh, Texas one time for Maxam Corporation Ooh. with Charles Hurwitz there. And it was um, it was the anniversary of the bombing uh -huh. um, of Judy and Daryl. And Judy had passed several years just just recently before. Mm -hmm. And so I went there and I sang a song that I wrote about the bombing. Um, in the chair, they said you can only talk for blah, blah, blah and I just got up and started singing. Uh -huh. And there, Hurwitz stood, clicking his pen, <laughs> like that, clicking the pen the whole time. And he didn't say a word. And nobody, and like somebody was going to try to shush me, and then they just somebody Sh just didn't let them do it. Good. And so I got the song through, and, and I just, I just, you know, I just said, you know, I hope you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's time to change this, you know. You got to open up your heart. Uh huh. And uh, now, now, Maxim, they're, they're, they were the ones who bought P, uh, Pacific Lumber, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and they were, they basically, they bought Pacific Lumber and then they wanted to just completely annihilate the whole forest. Yeah. And, you know, Pacific Lumber was, a, they weren't, they had no intention, they had every intention of, the old Pacific Lumber had every intention of basically keeping it so that their people could have jobs for generation yeah. to generation to generation they were, and they that were. the forest would not just be decimated, mm -hmm. you know? And then here's these guys. I mean, I met a couple guys, one of whom was like, you know, I just logged my, you know, one of my favorite spots as a kid and it broke my heart and I just had to quit. Had to do it. Oh, you know, yeah. I had to quit after that. Like I couldn't live with myself. And then he, he, you know, still worked in the industry, but he didn't want to work for them anymore. Mm -hmm. And he came and came to some Earth First rallies and, you know, became yeah. a little bit involved, you know, and, and was talking about his experience, you know, how, you know, he was raised to respect the forest and that he was raised in a logging family, you know, and that their tradition, the tradition of the, the old company was very different than when Max M bought the bought it and just said, "Okay, we're going to liquidate our assets." Mm -hmm. You're going to liquidate your assets. Those assets were living trees. That's a that's the, the that's In the future life. of a that's of a the community. future of Humboldt County. Yeah. You know, it's the yeah. future of our our whole ecosystem here. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so you know, we we fought it, and we're still you know fighting to some degree. There's a whole thing. Uh, not with Max Am Corporation, but there's a whole thing now with Richardson Grove where the, they want to uh, expand the highway. Right. And it's this beautiful grove. Some and of those, yeah, I've, I've drive, driven there through there hundreds of times. I mean, I go up and down the coast a lot because I play music, you know, in all these parts. Yeah. I've never seen, the only time I've ever seen traffic there was when there was a festival like reggae on the river. Uh-huh, right. And like, I'm sorry, 
so what? People are driving, you know, they're, they can drive a little slower and enjoy the redwoods on their way to their reggae festival. What, what a, what a wonderful place. I don't think any place. of those hippies yeah. are going to mind that those trees are there. No. They don't yeah. want to get there any faster. And they're fine those, going slower. Some of those trees are talking about cutting down are thousands of years old. Yeah, it's old. crazy. It's crazy. So, you know, the, the fight continues. Um, we've got a situation down in southern Oregon right now. Um, the W320 or something like that. I can't remember the name of it right now. I'm sorry. It's all right. Uh, my brain. The 350. Okay. Um, and, and it's basically the Williams community wants to have a, a community forest, which is great, you know. But there's this, this guy from Idaho owns this piece of property. It's like 350 acres or something, and he just wants to log it to make money. So he started clear-cutting it. He, they... they are trying to buy the land and unfortunately I don't really know how it all went down but unfortunately they started logging it before they were able to buy it but I think they're still trying to buy it because it's not all logged yet right um, and it's just it's really sad because it's not like there's that much old growth left there no, really isn't yeah. very much left in southern Oregon has one of the biggest roadless untouched areas that is getting slowly encroached on. I, I haven't it's checked getting, it. Yeah, it's like chick, chick, chink, chink, yeah. chink. How, I haven't checked in on that lately. How much, do you know how much of that is left? No, I don't know the exact percentages. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really a numbers girl, yeah. as, as you could tell by my last uh, debacle with the trying to remember the name of that. But I'm not a numbers girl, but there's not much. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, there's not a whole lot left. So why bother messing with it? Mm -hmm. You know, and there's mm -hmm. lots of second growth stands and, you know, and stuff that needs to be thinned out because of the way that it was sort of, re, you know, the way that it regrows. It's not as fire resistant as the old growth. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's no jobs. It's not like right. there's not the ability for people to have logging, you know, to, to, can you, to have enough wood. Right. You know, but what happens is, especially with the big trees, the big trees often get cut down and they get sent over Japan, sunk. That's what I was about and that to say. was what was happening a lot with um, with us in the 90s, and it was so frustrating because we'd see these gorgeous stands, and we'd be protesting these things, and then we'd know we'd be like, "Bye bye, beautiful trees," and they're down on the bottom of the, the ocean, and and they're going to get they're sold just back getting to us. yeah they're going to get sold back to us. They're just being stockpiled. They could have. They could have. And that's that hoarding mentality mm -hmm. that exists in the corporate America and the corporate world. Really, it's not even just America; it's just the the whole corporate model. Right. You know, let's let's buy up assets let's you know hoard the assets and then you know i mean people want to own water <laughs> well that's the big move right now yeah, yeah so this yeah. i mean it's scary we we live in some scary times we do. i do believe we have but, but we don't want to give in to fear that's no we don't want to give yeah. in to fear and we have I, like i said i do believe we have a chance to change things and for me seeing all these people out in the streets is just like yeah thank you i needed that burst of hope uh -huh. I know that it, nobody did it for me personally, obviously, but you know, for me in my own uh, in my own life and my own path and my own uh, you know traveling down this road doing the stuff that I do, you know, I kind of got to a place of being a little burnt out, and I really needed to see that burst of life, especially like young people just getting out. Because I mean, I just remember being, you know, the young person getting out and protesting everything and being at all the rallies and being all this stuff. And, and then I just sort of didn't know that there was nothing going on. And there were mm -hmm. always tiny amounts of people, you know, there'd be 50 or 60 of us, or maybe like Redwood Summer, we had, you know, more people right. at different things. But to see this many people coming out on it this often, do you uh, feel like giving us another burst of hope? Um, yeah, I would yeah. love to. I actually yeah. would love to sing a song um, for one of my favorite rivers who needs our help, okay. the Klamath River. All right. uh, the Klamath River has uh, the J.C. Boyle and the Copco 1 and 2 dams and the Iron Gate Dam that really need to be removed. And if you talk to any of the Kodok people or the Yurok people that are traditional peoples of the river, of the Klamath River, um, their way of life is, has been sustained by the salmon, and uh, the salmon populations have dwindled to the point of destruction. Uh -huh. And part of that has to do with the fact that the Iron Gate Dam is a shallow dam, and the water comes over the top. The water doesn't, nowadays when they build dams, they're kind of a little bit smarter. The water comes out the bottom where it's cold. The yeah. sun heats up the water, it goes over the top, uh -huh. and the Klamath River naturally has this algae and so then we get these toxic algae blooms, whereas like if I let my dog in the river, 
She's asleep back there. She's asleep. <laughs> uh, if I let my dog in the river during that time, she could die because it, these microcystins, you know, destroy your liver and myself. I mean, we are kayakers, so we go in the water all the time. Mm. And, um, you know, we have, to, we have to call up this number to find out if it's okay to go in the river. And, uh, <sighs> but anyway, the, the, the Klamath is in need. So this song is a, is a tune I wrote for the Klamath River, and it has a, the last verse is a positive affirmation because in reality the dams are still there right but in my mind's eye the dams are gone so the last verse being about the dams being gone and uh, this is called schoolhouse and it, it came from a little spot on the river where we like to kayak and play it's called uh, the schoolhouse rapid okay. I must cross Cottonwood Creek to get to the schoolhouse. School is where I learn, it's where I play. And it doubles as a church come Sunday morning, where the whole congregation comes to pray. In our church, we are baptized by the water. And the river sings the sweetest melody. She says, Sing along, oh my sons and my daughters. It's a song of busted dams and running free. Oh, the clamor was a wild and mighty river. And her salmon kept returning from the sea and we pray that she'll return to her glory to her glory she'll return so mote it be for the clamor will be wild, mighty river. J.C. Paul, Cop 1 and 2, cease to be. And the iron gates is blown to bits and gone forever. The mighty Klamath will be restored. Her glory.
mighty cloud must then restore to her glory. Oh, I'm loving this. <laughs> this, is, this is so wonderful. I got the fiddle in my head. I got this. Uh -huh. I play this incredible violin player, and she just goes off during that whole middle section. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm thinking fiddle in my head. So you got to imagine the fiddle there. Okay. And someday I'll record it with the with her, and you can uh -huh. hear it that way. All right. All right. Well, we've got uh, a little over seven minutes to go, and uh, I wonder if we could maybe work our way up to some kind of. Uh, uh, utopian vision, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe maybe we won't go that far. But you know, look, we, we've we've been down in a few a few low points there, and you know, what, what maybe we can figure out a way a way together, you know, to to get us get us into a better world. I don't know. Uh, I think it starts really for me. I mean, and I don't know. You know, I don't know anything. Uh -huh. I'm just a little person, you know, walking around doing my thing, but. I get these little feelings about things, and in my mind and in my heart, it starts with just looking each other in the eye. Uh -huh. You know, when you walk down the street. Don't avert your gaze. You avert your gaze at people. Yeah. You know, somebody looks different than you. You know, you don't want to talk to them uh -huh. or whatever. And that's, it's a, not an easy practice, but as my yoga teacher says, they call it a practice, not a perfect for a reason. Uh -huh. It's a practice. So, you know, just, you know, getting out of our comfort zone a little bit. You know, I liked what George Friday was saying um, yesterday at the, uh, she was a, a wonderful activist gal, and she was talking about, you know, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. putting yourself into positions with people that you normally wouldn't necessarily associate with. Uh -huh. And I love that. I think that's a really powerful and, uh, and important w part of what we do. Right, yeah. You know, is to just... And to look each other in the eye and to remember that, you know, There's a person that person those is eyes. not any different than me. You know, like, yeah. it's easy to want to, it's easy to avoid. You know, it's easy to avoid each other. Oh, that person's a Republican, or that person's a Democrat, or that person's a Ron Paul person, or that person's a, so I don't even want to talk to them. I got, I got a story for you along those lines. Awesome. I was biking my kids to school once when they were little. They were in a bike uh, trailer. Nice. And, uh, uh. I had uh, been on my way to school that, that uh, morning. Uh, I had uh, skidded and, and, and crashed on the ice. And um, we got up and we we're, you know, we're okay, you know, and biking down the road and there's this guy biking towards us. And I'm thinking, I gotta warn him, you know, and I smile at him and I'm making eye contact with him and he sees me making eye contact at him. And he looks down, you know, and he, and he doesn't want to have anything to do with me because, you know, I'm, I'm invading his space, right. you know, uh, uh, his psychic space. And, and I was so flustered, I just let him go by. And I, I, I watched him, and sure he enough, took a digger, he, took, he? He, he ate it right there in the same spot I did. I, you know, part, I guess I'm par partially to, to blame because I didn't warn him. But at the same time, you know, I was ready. I was right there. I was just about to deliver it. And then he just whoosh, closed off because he just couldn't handle that. that uh, that that thought that that well he might have been able to handle it though that's yeah. the thing is you made a judgment that he couldn't handle this it is true because he true. looked down so you know yeah. i mean i yeah. don't know you know that, uh -huh. that's an interesting well I'm, I'm willing to take i'm willing to take responsibility but for certainly it certainly not your fault yeah. that it happened but no, you know yeah. but i'm just my my only uh my only point would be that maybe he was maybe he maybe he could have handled it yeah well, yeah. you don't, you'll never know. I'll never know. But, but that... the next time, I bet you're going to say something. <laughs> the next time anything like that happens, you're going to be like speaking up, yo, yo, oh, ice, yeah. right uh, there. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. But, but yeah, but it, it, just, it just struck me that, was, that, that has always come back to me as symbolic of that's what, the, that's what we're fighting against is, is you know, people, people are afraid when, when, when you open yourself up to somebody else. They're afraid they have to match that, I think. The reality is, you know what? We do start having to match that. Well, it's but true. Yeah. the only way it's going to happen, we have to make the. I mean, if you know, we know. Mm -hmm. So we have to take that first step. Yeah. And it's it's not easy, but it is about. I mean, again, like I think. You know, there's this whole continuum of of things, 
and the balance you are, we're only going to come to balance if we allow ourselves to realize that our vulnerability is also our strength because yeah, I agree we are yeah. we're vulnerable to all these things that are happening on our planet and to act like we're just tough and that it doesn't matter you know that's not real mm -hmm. you know we we're extremely vulnerable to it but we're also really vulnerable to each other you know and but we don't want to be because it's painful oh yeah it's hard to say you know it's like that whole thing like you know I hate you go away come back you know it's like uh -huh. the whole you know thing that happens in interpersonal things where somebody's like oh, I, I love you so much I love you so much oh my god I feel too vulnerable go away right you right. know and then yeah. oh wait wait come back come uh -huh. back you know and 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 that I mean you know the personal stuff is political but you know I I come from that you know that place of, of learning from the feminists you know that came before me uh -huh. people like Holly near and the women's music um, movement and you know where the personal is political mm -hmm. you know when I was studying music therapy and women's studies in upstate New York back in the early 80s you know I learned that the personal is very political mm -hmm. and so I I do feel that that personal work is the first step yeah you know because yeah. the more whole we can be in ourselves and the more we have to give and the more we make it uh, attractive the more we we the more we pull more more people in who would have been pulled in the other direction. But we don't even yeah. have to pull because yeah. if you just if we're we're just if we just allow ourselves if we just do the work that we're supposed to do and not worry about every, what everybody else is doing, I think that really I mean because nobody in Occupy is saying we want Alice to wake up and see this on Democracy Now and be inspired, right. but that's what's happening. So I think people are just doing what they're being called to do, and that's. You know, if we do what we love and we do what we're called to do and we do it with a heart that's open and vulnerable and we do it with in, in mind, keeping in mind that we are a part of a whole and so that the things that we do are going to affect everybody else and taking responsibility in that way, I think we have a shot uh -huh. at our utopian dream. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's not going to happen that, overnight. You but, have that utopian dream in your own neighborhood. You know, it yeah. doesn't have to be... Uh, delivered to you you know yeah, it doesn't you, have to be spreading out everywhere you just need to make sure you can sure create it's it in you your are. own little box but then and the then thing it, is when it's in your own little box and you start planting those beautiful flowers outside somebody walks by and they catch a whiff of that utopian dream the next thing you know they're planting flowers in their front yard too i love it yeah, I, yeah. i'm a gardener so i love that <laughs> well uh do you have any uh, I, I i'm hoping that you're gonna lead us out the same way you let us in to, uh, today with with uh uh, what's the name of that song? I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> For what it's For worth. What it's worth you you want, want me to give you another verse? Please do. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And thanks for tuning in to Occupy TV.